This seems like a little bit of a victory that, that you've scored against uh, this Australian mining company. Why, why did it come about this way? Because they, they seem to be uh, going after quite a large tract of land and suddenly they've pulled back quite significantly. Yes, they have pulled back out of 88% of their prospective mining rights. They have uh, withdrawn from a couple of areas in the southern part of the Karoo completely. Others they have reverted back to prospecting licenses only and they are staying with only 12% of the original application. The argument which they have published is not really very credible. That is the change in environmental leg legislature. That was always there and hasn't changed overnight. So that is just a smokescreen. We believe very strongly that the companies preempted an outright rejection of the actual application. Because as we studied these application documents, we could see they weren't really worth the paper written on and it was for everyone to see. We now have it on relatively clear evidence that it is within the Western Cape government. It was the Department of Environmental Affairs and um, in, uh, Development Planning, Department of Water Affairs and other organizations, organizations which clearly said to their colleagues in the Department of Mineral Resources, guys, this is not licensable and just to avoid an outright rejection the company withdrew to a smaller area and it has to start the whole process from scratch. That's to me like a withdrawal completely. Did you have a role to play in, in the exposure of, of, of the, the dangers and do you think this, this is a personal victory in some ways? I would think it is a personal victory and a victory for my organization because we were the only uh, civil society organization within the Karoo which really worked full time and with qualified staff against this kind of application. We were able to expose many of the technical and scientific deficiencies in the application documents and we were able to raise more than 140 substantial submissions from organized farming, from local communities, from environmental activists and from ordinary citizens across the Karoo. And I think this kind of massive outcry and exposure of scientific and technical difficulties and diff deficiencies has swayed uh, the decision making. It feels like um, with the rise of the internet and the, and the easy share of information that civic organizations like Safsky, mm -hmm. like Alta like in Joburg, yeah. like Greenpeace, yes. their, their voices are being heard a lot more. That is correct, yeah. And of course it's the rise of social media which has given us a lot of access to people where we don't have usually. But we find, and this is very clearly shown in this case as well, social media alone does not create activism. It's just too easy to click and say, yes, I'm for it or against it. That does not change the world. I think what changed the world was our triple strategy of both talking to local people. Over the last three months, we have been lecturing or talking or presenting to more than 500 people physically on the ground so that they know us, they see what we are talking about. We bring them out into the felt and explain the uh, geological conditions of the Karoo, why uranium mining is there and why it is dangerous. That is then matched with a massive uh, social media campaign and we must never forget the uh, established and traditional media which reaches a much wider audience. So the three things, the physical talking to people on the ground, being visible, not just flying in with good information but being on the ground, uh, social media and traditional media together, they work wonders and I think that's the story here.